There's Rob. Rob, how you doing, man? It's been it's been a minute since we've had a chance to talk. It has been. It's been a little while. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Um, so for everyone that's joining, uh, watching this live, I, I want to introduce myself. I'm Bradley Williams, the Chief Customer Officer and the Vice President of Operations for ResCare Workforce Solutions. Excuse me, for Equus Workforce Solutions. Little slip of the tongue there. <laughs> um, and I'm excited today to have Rob Lebeau joining us. Uh, we have, uh, as many of you are familiar with, like quick sessions that were at the live uh, forum in years past. This is going to be a quick interview because we have the chairman stopping by to have a quick conversation with Ron here in about 13 minutes. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about Rob and introduce him. Rob is uh, the manager of the Workforce Solutions Group at the Atlanta Regional Commission. Uh, and in his role, he serves as the director of the Atlanta Regional Workforce Development Board. He oversees uh, Workforce Atlanta Regional, which provides programs and services for dislocated workers, unemployed adults, youth, business, and businesses with employment needs. He serves a seven county region that includes Cherokee, Clayton, Douglas, Fayette, Gwinnett, Henry, and Rockdale counties. Um, from 2000 to 2015, Rob worked in land use, government services, community development divisions, uh, and, and the community development divisions at the Atlanta Regional Commission. He's held roles that range from principal planner to section manager, um, and he's been involved in just a variety of technical management functions that are related to planning, economic competitiveness, and leadership development for the 10-county Atlanta region. Prior to joining ARC uh, in 2000, Rob worked 10 years in local government as a consultant, focusing on comprehensive planning, zoning, and neighborhood redevelopment. Uh, Rob has a Master's of Public Administration with emphasis in urban planning from the University of Central Florida and is a member of the American Institute of Certified Planners. And with that, that's a great introduction, Rob. Welcome to Live at the Forum. We're glad to have you today. Thank you very much. Glad to be participating. And since we only have a couple of minutes to really get to some, some key workforce issues, let's just dive right in. Uh, I, I'm very interested to hear and to talk with you about uh, COVID-19 and the impact that it's had on your seven county region. So my, my question would be, can you share with us the impact or the changes that this pandemic has had on your workforce centers and how your system has responded to it? Absolutely. So first of all, Metro Atlanta has been hit very hard with COVID-19. Um, coming into this year, our economy was doing great. We were moving along very nicely. Of course, COVID-19 hits and um, our industries were impacted significantly. Of course, uh, entertainment, accommodations, food service, all of that. It, there's a lot of concentration within Metro Atlanta and those are the hardest hit sectors that, that we're seeing. Um, and then from our center standpoint, we have a seven county area that, that, that we serve. We have, of course, our one stop and we have affiliate sites in each one of our of our counties. Um, very high touch, a lot of walk in customers. For example, last year we had about 32,000 visits at our center. So a lot of people walking in the door. Second week of March, we shut the doors. Um, now we shut the doors to people coming in, but we were still providing services. So a lot of virtual services, emails, phone calls. And very quickly we shifted from a lot of our one-on-one -on -one, um, career coaching and our small group training sessions to online. And we had to learn very quickly how to do that, but it has worked out pretty well that we started, we would do a live session on a training topic, record it, and then post it up on our website so that any of our customers come, can come through and view those services. So it sounds like so many others that you quickly pivoted. I love Karen Norrington Reeves' term, it's the year of the pivot. Uh, you pivoted that virtual. It sounds like it's uh, it's going really well. Let's let's take that a, a step further. I know that uh, between yourself and your teams and your board members, that there's a lot of dialogue on what does reopening look like for right. uh, your area. So can you share with us just how you're strategizing and what your plans are to reopen and and maybe in the same light, share with us what you, what your area sees as uh, the vision on how the future of services will look for your region. Right. So first thing is we're following the science. There's a lot of interest in opening up as soon as we can, and we certainly want to do that. I, I think we're providing very strong virtual services. 
Um, but it would be better to be able to offer both virtual and in-person services. And we want to get there, but we want to get there in a way that is safe for our customers and safe for our staff and safe for all of our providers. So we're going to follow the science and see, see uh, where that leads us when we feel that it is uh, most appropriate to open up for in-person services. Um, and when we do so, we'll have a phasing in plan. And I believe as, as many others are talking about, our computer lab will be operational, but we won't use every station. We'll space people out. We'll, we're buying the uh, plexiglass providers to put be between people and also at our uh, receptionist where our navigator is when people walk in, there'll be a plexiglass there. So we'll be, we're taking those precautions. We're gonna have face masks for customers and for staff, lots of hand sanitizer, lots of cleaning of the equipment. Um, so all of that is being put in place now. Um, and then very likely when we do open up and we haven't opened yet, when we do, um, most likely it will be for um, appointments only that we won't offer the walk-ins at the beginning to see how we were able to uh, coordinate the staffing and, and, and see the flow from that standpoint. So we're putting a lot of plans in place. We're, we're ready to get started, um, but we're not at the point to actually pull the trigger and open it up yet. Um, and it will be trial and error. We're gonna see what works. Um, you know, if, if, if things are working out, working out well, we'll continue to do it. If they don't work out well, we'll make some adjustments, but it will definitely have to be a trial and error process. That's right, you gotta adjust, be nimble, right? And if it doesn't work, you drop back and pot and figure out what does work for your region. So um, it sounds like so many others, that's exciting to hear. I'm glad that uh, you all are so thoughtful in your process. Um, for those that are not familiar with the Atlanta region, the, the 10 county metro area of Atlanta has, I, I believe this is right, Rob, it has five workforce boards, is that correct? Right. Um, so in that whole five workforce board area, if you will, uh, a, a lot of coordination has to take place. And I know that even uh, prior or before the pandemic, that regional coordination around you know, strategy and services and consistency of what's being delivered to the businesses and the job seekers and the communities around were, were important topics for you and for your counterparts. So uh, can you share with us just a little bit around um, uh, what regional coordination looks like now and maybe the impact the pandemic has had on it and uh, how that may shift or just what your efforts are around regional coordination with your other workforce board counterparts? Sure, sure. And as you mentioned, uh, Metro Atlanta, from a workforce standpoint, is a very complicated system. We have a 10 county area, about four and a half to five million people within, within our metro area. Within those 10 counties, we have five different workforce boards. So there's my area, which serves the seven outer counties. And then you have the city of Atlanta, Fulton County, um, Cobb County, and Cab County individually that have all their own uh, workforce boards. And then the reality is, of course, our customers, our job seekers, and our businesses, it doesn't matter to them which workforce board they're working with. It is all one labor market. You don't live and work, for the most part, in one specific area. We are crossing boundaries all the time for our, as we implement our regional economy. It is, it is a large labor shed. So the more we can do to streamline our services and to coordinate our services, the better we're going to be able to be uh, responding to our customers. So a couple of things that we've been doing, um, one is an outreach system. So a few years ago, the state went to a common branding for the entire state. We went, we're, we're now WorkSource Georgia. So all of the 19 local workforce boards in the state, we are WorkSource Atlanta Regional or WorkSource City of Atlanta or WorkSource DeKalb. We went a step further in the 10 county area. Individually, we have our, our own name, but as collective, when we are talking about us of the five workforce boards, we are WorkSource Metro Atlanta. And so we use that as a common branding as much as possible. Um, the second thing that we've done is we, and this is something we're very excited about, is we had created a single entry point, a single landing page um, on the internet. It's called atlworks.org. And it provides the basic overview of the workforce services that are available to our customers. Again, our job seekers and our businesses. And any customer can go in there, put in their basic information and what county that they reside in or what county they're employed in. And the information will automatically go to the right workforce board. They don't have to try and figure it out themselves. And then they will then get a, a job coach or, or a business services rep will contact them directly, the right person. So we're creating a, a single point of entry. 
the other exciting thing that we've had to do is we just started piloting having our actual applications and our um, information to, to get enrolled in the system online. We were piloting that in a couple of our centers. Pandemic hit, we shut the doors. We're now gonna roll that out quickly to all of the centers across the 10 counties. Um, and, and that's gonna be starting in the, next, in the next few weeks. So you can get, again, one point of entry, you can start the application process instead of having to figure out exactly where you need to go, start it online and it will automatically go to the right place. That is, that is super exciting. I mean, I know that so many areas have tried to have a single point of entry to make sure that it's at ease on the community and like ease of access, but it, but it gets funneled to the right place. So congratulations on those efforts. That sounds, uh, it sounds great, very exciting. Um, you know, Rob, I, I think we have time for one more question uh, before uh, Ron and the chairman jump in here. And I, I, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And I know that there is a lot of buzz uh, between colleagues and around the forum, just around allocations. And as we know, formula allocations to boards are based on lag data and statistics of the past. And we've seen several workforce areas that may have had reduced funding as of recent, but really have the need for increased funding. Right. Um, I, I really just love to hear what's happening with your current funding and maybe your thoughts on the future state of federal funding and any plans that you may have to diversify your portfolio to make sure that you can meet the needs of the community. Right, and you mentioned this, and I mentioned at the very beginning, we had a really strong economy coming into 2020, which is great for the economy, but when you talk about allocations, which are based on, on, on 2019 performance, we actually received about a 15% uh, cut in our allocations uh, across our three, our three funding streams. So we were gonna be starting the year today, July 1st, um, with less than what we had last year. Of course, pandemic hit and we're gonna have a greater need. So um, we're, we're starting off trying to strategize how we work with a, a little bit less funding, but we're very grateful that the CARES Act was passed and that we received some dislocated worker national emergency grant funds to move forward. And we're also looking at other areas. For example, we're working with um, Atlanta Career Rise, which is part of a funders collaborative for workforce. They get grant funds and we are coordinating with them with the workforce boards to try and blend both nonprofit data, um, I mean, nonprofit funding, as well as um, the federal funding that we receive. And of course, looking at all of our partners that are part of the one stop and how we could braid uh, the funding that we have available to us. That's gonna be critical as we move forward into the rest of the year. That's wonderful, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. And I know that there are gonna be many more conversations to be had around funding and that we're all keeping our, yes. keeping our eye on it, on what's gonna happen as we move into the fall and into next year. Um, so Rob, I appreciate it. I know that this is kind of like a quick shop and a quick it interview. <laughs> uh, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. We hope that you're having a great forum um, and with that, I believe that Ron is, is in the background and on the line, uh, and we'd ask Ron to, to come in. And Rob, we, just, we, we thank right, you for thank your you. time. Good to see you. Have a good one.